So my name is Barbara Gervasi, and I am the president and the executive director of the Kyle Highland Foundation for Teen Support. And we run the Venetia Teen Center. Um, tonight, we are having two presentations as part of our Substance Abuse Prevention Awareness Week. And um, first off, we will have a presentation by um, two members from the Friday Night Live Club at Venetia High School. Um, we have Mia Chow and we have Yuna B who will be um, presenting a presentation on tips and coping mechanisms for mental health and substance abuse. And we will follow that presentation by um, another presentation um, uh, from two individuals from the LGBTQ minus tobacco community and I will introduce them um, and that presentation after we hear from the Friday Night Live Club. So I will make you guys, uh, I'm gonna make you, um, Yuna, the co-host, if that's okay. I, I'll see if I can make you both co-host. I'm not sure if I can do that. Looks like I can. Okay. I'll go ahead. Okay, I'll share my screen and could you tell me if you can see it properly? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, great. So hi everyone. This is our presentation about tips and coping mechanisms for mental health and substance abuse. Um, my name is Yuna, and I'm joined by Mia Chow. And we're members of a club called Benicia Friday Night Live from the high school. So let's get started. So first off, we want to talk really quickly about how you actually identify substance abuse. So if you think any of your friends, maybe a family member or a coworker, is struggling with substance abuse, you can ask them a few questions to kind of help you narrow that down. So uh, questions include, have you ever felt like you should cut down on your substance use? And do you ever lie about how much you use it? Do you have any people around you who are actually concerned about your substance abuse? And have you ever felt guilty, bad, or ashamed about using it in general? Has this ever caused problems for you? Or have you ever tried to actually cut back but were unable to? And so if they answer yes to most of these questions, then they might have a substance abuse problem on, your ha on their hands. And today we're going to give you some tips on how to help cope with that. Okay, so first let's talk about how substance abuse actually affects your mental health. Well, short term, you might know that substances can alleviate unwanted feelings like hopelessness, anxiety, irritability, and negative thoughts. However, in the long term, substance use actually exacerbates these unwanted feelings, and it often ends in abuse or dependence. It can also worsen your mental health symptoms that already exist within you, while drawing you further from possible rehabilitation and living a happy and healthy lifestyle. So in the long term, it's not worth it, even though in the short term, you might feel really good about using substances. So if you think your mental health is being affected by substance abuse, or if somebody you know is being affected, then we are going to present to you some useful tips and tricks on how to cope. So our first little tip for you to help you or maybe a close family member to quit is first, before you even start your journey, you have to find a really strong reason that's going to motivate you throughout that journey. So why do you want to quit? Maybe it's for the people surrounding you. Maybe it's for one of your health issues or just so you can actually live a happy lifestyle free of any substances. So find that reason and write it down and that'll help you motivate throughout the rest of the long journey ahead. And the second tip is to prepare yourself because 
you need to be prepared before you begin this journey. There's going to be a lot of hard things that are going to come by and you want to prepare yourself as much as you can. So maybe that's by lining up a strong support system of your loved ones that you know you can contact during your hard times or just educating yourself on all the possible methods that you can quit and also educating yourselves on what symptoms you might experience so you know what you're getting into. All right, so some more tips are to uh, simply clean out your house. You can toss out all of the items that you associate with whatever substance you're using and wash out any clothes that smell like it. Use air fresheners to get rid of the scent in your home and clean out your car to prevent anything from reminding you of the substance. This is really important because you want to create a distance between you and the substance so you don't um, feel like you need to go back to it. And then you also want to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So make sure to stay active, even if it's just light exercise daily and continue to eat healthy and increase the quantities of fruit, vegetables, whole grains, and lean protein in your diet. If you already have a relatively healthy lifestyle, it would be best to continue this lifestyle to create some sort of continuity in your life. But if you don't, it's okay to change it up for the better. So the next tip we have for you is to avoid any triggers. And this might seem really simple, but one of the big things that you or your loved one will need to do is identify what triggers your substance abuse and also identify the times you might typically go to your substance. So maybe it's right after you eat breakfast. That's when you usually go take a smoke or drink alcohol, or maybe it's uh, whenever you drink or eat coffee or anything else. So you want to find healthy alternatives for those time periods to make sure that you're not relying and going back to that substance. So maybe it's chewing gum during those times instead of smoking, or maybe it's taking your dog out on a walk after breakfast. Another healthy way to cope with substance abuse is to give yourself a break sometimes. Uh, you need to unwind and make sure your mental health is doing okay during your long journey to recover from substance abuse. So find ways to unwind. Maybe it's finding a new hobby. Maybe it's dancing to your favorite song or watching a movie. There are many ways to cope and to take care of your mental health that don't require substances. All right, and the next tip is to think about the rewards. So one of the perks of giving a, a substance is all of the money that you will actually save from it. Because instead of spending money on purchasing these substances, you can spend them on something nice for yourself or maybe even going somewhere. And by doing this, you can calculate how much you've actually saved over time and gradually give yourself rewards because you are using the money for something nice for yourself instead of something that's not healthy. And our last tip is to try and try again. If your plan doesn't work out the first time, it's okay to try again. It actually takes most people several times before giving up a substance for good. So if it doesn't work, you can use this as an opportunity to step up your commitment instead and kind of rethink why you wanna do this, think of all the benefits, and then you'll be even more motivated. So oh, next we wanted to provide you with any resources. Maybe you might need this or maybe someone you know could use these resources. So there's a few helplines we listed. And so these are 24 seven helplines that they can call into if they never just need advice or someone to talk to about it. There's also a free custom quitting plan at becomeanx.org that can help with uh, quitting substance abuse. And they create a custom plan for you to help with that. And also Google has a program called Recover Together and you can find recovery groups near you. And so you can work together with other people who are dealing with the same issues and go on that journey together to recover from substance abuse. So that is it for our presentation. Thank you all for watching and we hope you learned something. If you need to get in touch with us for questions or suggestions, we have all our contact information listed below as well as the Kyle Highland Foundations. Thank you.